Welcome to another episode of The Catholic Couple, having fun with faith, family, and friends. I'm your co-host, Bobby Fredrickson. With me, as always, my beautiful wife. Katie Fredrickson. I'm the convert Catholic, and she's the... The cradle Catholic. And here we are on our very first stream yard coming over the internet <laughs> uh, video. We've been pretty anti-video, but we yeah, have a very special guest. Podcast with greasy high buns. So. <laughs> yeah, she's... She likes the fact that we can go into the basement and just kind of not yeah. have to worry about doing makeup and stuff like that. But right. we made an exception. Our very <laughs> first one, we have a very special guest, Dr. Peter Howard. Uh, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks. It's, it's great to be your number one. Hopefully not the last one. Let's make it. Yeah, make it I know. Count. <laughs> well, we found each other on Instagram because our love for Fulton Sheen, I post usually about at least once a day, a quote from Fulton Sheen. And Dr. Peter Howard is the founder of the Fulton Sheen Institute, and he's working tirelessly to try to get this uh, canonization on back on track. So we're going to discuss those kinds of things, Fulton Sheen, and then uh, some other things. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, where how the Holy it all Spirit, unfolds. Yeah, how the Holy Spirit guides the conversation. So first and foremost, uh, Dr. Peter, do you want to just kind of give us a brief who you are, what you're from, how you how you got your uh, doctorate in sacred theology and what led you to yeah, your whole life story. Five yeah. Just five minutes of everything. <laughs> just your, you know, kind of how you came to love Fulton Sheen and then we'll go from there. Sure. Great. Yeah. That's, that's always the dreaded question. And I, I don't have my wife here to be sitting there to discreetly like, you know, tap my knee, like honey, like pick it up, you know, or you know, to <laughs> redirect me. That's, that's her thing. Um, anyway, but, um, well, let's see. I currently live in Northern Idaho. Uh, Sandpoint, which is uh, way up there, we're about sixty miles from the Canadian border. Oh wow! Um, and uh, but it's real, real beautiful area, mountains, lakes. Uh, when you Google it, you'll see some beautiful pictures. Uh, this huge Lake Ponderé, and there's a ski resort. And um, never thought in my life I'd actually be in this part of the country. I, I was born and raised in New Jersey. Oh wow! Um, and uh, yeah, and I was basically just back there, just drove across the entire country up until last night from philadelphia all the way in northern idaho so wow. um is that a good scenic trip or is it a it's is it a flat like like a boring like falling asleep yeah. at the wheel trip well <laughs> it, it depends on what part of the day it is yeah, uh, yeah, some of my true. trips are at night and it wouldn't matter where you where you're driving um but it's a it is a beautiful trip i mean you do get to see all the major parts at least of the northern half of the country mm. Um, and I do enjoy that. I'm not a big city fan, you know, city person mm -hmm. fan. So it's like, get me in and out of Chicago as fast as I can. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. anyway, you know, I, I grew up in uh, New Jersey and um, let's see if I can just summarize things here. Uh, yeah, I was, I don't have a, like a, I'm not a convert to the faith. I was, I was a cradle Catholic as well. Uh, God came into my life in a real powerful way when I was in high school. Uh, my father was in a car accident, a really bad mm -hmm. one, and it left him paralyzed uh, until the, you know, throughout the rest of his life. And, um, but that was a decisive moment in my, in my life where it was, uh, you know, choosing God and trusting in him and our mm -hmm. blessed mother or turning toward hatred, abandoning the faith. And how could you do right. this to me and my family? But that yeah. so I was like four, 13, 14 years old. And, um, you know, that kind of kicked off a lot of my own faith life. And so eventually, um, brought me to um well i've actually had a whole bunch of conversions <laughs> conversions during my my team no it never it never stops you know yeah. it's not a one and done right it's not and it's not a matter of how much you know you still have free will you still have temptations and and you can certainly mm -hmm. fall big time um so anyway that was uh exciting time of life just a discernment i really grew closer to the blessed mother i'm always grateful to my mom who uh, was the real pillar of our faith at home, prayer. She had prayer groups like all the time. I was kind of in the background, but believe me, it made a massive difference over time. Wow. Yeah. Um, so anyway, went to college, uh, Franciscan University back in the 90s, finished that, discerned my vocation, spent you know a few years looking into the, whether God was calling me to the priesthood or not. Mm -hmm. Eventually that uh, led me to um, meet my wife, and uh, not while I was, um, well, in a certain sense, yeah, I was, I was part of the community, but I, I didn't know, I didn't know who she was until after I, I left because the community fizzled out. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, uh, eventually went to, oh, actually, I'm going to stop right there. It was at that time I was in my 
like mid twenties, early twenties or so, where I got introduced to Fulton Sheen, and that rocked the world on a on a pilgrimage that I took in Texas. Um, real math moment of no matter whatever I had experienced before, once I got introduced to him um, on this retreat, it just radically changed me. So, and then I knew so for they the had, rest of my life. Did they have you? Part of it. Yes. Sorry. So did they have you, when you got exposed to, to him, like you watched something, listened to something, read something, how was, how was it his ideas and yeah. his. Yeah. Good question. Brand of the uh, my sister, as I was heading out, I was in Dallas and I was only there for a year, but you know, the end of that year, I, I just knew Lord, the Lord, uh, I had unanswered questions regarding what he wanted me to do. So I took a retreat about three and a half hours East to, or out toward Tyler. And, um, so my sister, <laughs> I happened to stop by her house and she walked up and gave me a, like a stack of cassette tapes. And, oh. uh, and it was a retreat that Fulton Sheen had given back in 1972. And uh, it was to priests, seminarians. And I was like, oh, well, you know, kind of discerning right now. And uh, I also wasn't like in the mood really to listen to a retreat. I kind of had my own program there. But anyway, I said, mm -hmm. look, I've heard of this man. Very, I knew very little about him, hardly anything. And but but my sister said my pastor was there and, and he had just died maybe a few months before, and he was very young, he had died of cancer, but he was there, and what Sheen said to him completely changed his life and his priesthood. And I was like, Oh, well, it's worth giving him a shot. So I did. I gave mm -hmm. him about five or ten minutes to see if I would be uh, interested. And uh, he had me completely hooked. And I just sat in my car most of that retreat, listening to, from conference to conference to conference, and then basically mm -hmm. memorized it over the next couple of years. I just listened to it over and over. Wow. Um, and I, I just knew that whatever God had in my life, this man, what he was teaching me and speaking to my heart was going to be instrumental for everything I did. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being very prophetic because uh, I eventually went to Rome um, within a couple of years of that, and then did my doctorate in 2008, and it was on Fulton Sheen. It was on his Marian teaching, Mary's Mediatrics of All Graces in particular, and um, just was uh, kind of locked and loaded. Like, this guy, I've got to get him out everywhere. So that's <laughs> after that, no matter what God uh, opened for me you know, before me, I worked for a bishop, I worked for a parish, and everywhere I'd go and talk, he was part of, of my message. Mm -hmm. And and one of the things that really impacted me more than anything spiritually was I, I um, adopted into my own life his daily holy hour. And that rocked my world and has always been um, a point of fixity in my own life. Because a mm -hmm. lot of times we go through life and we're like, well, what does God want? If you're spending an hour a day before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament and you're asking the Lord, put your desires on my heart, lead me, guide me, help me to know you, and then try to listen after that, mm -hmm. you, you can have confidence that what is in your heart is being uh, delivered there, you could say, be, being placed there by the Lord. So when you make a decision, you, you're like, yeah, I think the Lord really mm -hmm. wants this. So yeah. um, anyway, so she came into my life like that. Uh, and of course, in the background um, was the introduction of my wife uh, right around that same time. And this is like 1998, 99. And then um, we got married in 2002. We have six beautiful children, five girls and a boy. Oh, and awesome. I have one granddaughter. And uh, yeah, it's, just, it's been an adventure the last 21 years of marriage. Wow. wow, that's amazing. So when you 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 go on the road a lot, right? Or you have just gotten back, how do you still make that holy hour a priority when you're in your travel? I do. And how do you do that? And how how do you accomplish that? Are you just have like where's the nearest Catholic church that I can you that's know it's open because they're not yeah. open a lot anymore. You got to make you know there are hours of uh adoration or, or yeah. if they're just in front of the tabernacle. Right. Right. Well I always try to find a church where I am. And like you said, um, you, you can go around and knock and they're closed. Like I had that just recently when I was uh, just kind of southeast of Chicago and there's a lot of churches there. And it was the middle of the day. 
Yeah. That's and our neck see, of the woods. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I see We're kids. from the south, southeast Chicago. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this was, uh, what was the town? Home something. Homewood? Homer, ho- Homewood. Homer, Homewood. Homewood? Yeah. yeah. There's a pizza place that my friend really loves. There. <laughs> that's yeah. the best yeah. pizza in the whole world. Aurelio's? Yeah. Yes, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's the Aurelio's original. Aurelio's is the best. That's yeah, the only, that is that's the the only pizza too. we eat. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. So he'll be, uh, yeah, he'll be excited when I tell him that. So I was looking at, so you, you may actually know, I looked, I went to a few nearby churches and they were all closed and they wouldn't let me in, even though I saw one guy getting out. Um, Hmm. It was the end of school. Anyway, so when I can't make it, uh, I make, I I set an hour aside, I get in my car and um, I, I, I make that intention. And, you know, Fulton Sheen talked about that. Uh, cause I wondered too, cause he, he always made one, but there were a couple of times he couldn't get in and, and, uh, where he'd walk up and down like the side of the church, like if he's like in Europe and he goes in and like, mm-hmm. up and down an alley, just right along the wall. Cause he knows that the, the tabernacle is on the other side. Um, I've parked in a parking lot, like where I know it's real close to the Lord and I'll just be in my car and I just dedicate yeah. that hour. That's so um, cool. but if I can't, you could do it anywhere. And yeah. Um, you could do it in your room. The point is, is that you set that hour apart. Yeah. And and Sheen talked about that because uh, in in World War II, he begged every American to make the hour. He said Catholics, Protestants, and Jews should all make the hour. Mm. And he says Catholic Protestants and Jews can make the hour in their home. The Catholics mm-hmm. should do it in church. Um, but he was talking about how a soldier uh, was made his hour on a raft in the middle of the oh. Pacific Ocean. Yeah. So. You know, it's it's one no of those excuses. Things that, yeah. So it's 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 the intentionality of one mm-hmm. continuous hour and what mm-hmm. you're doing um, during it uh, that that makes all the difference. Yeah, and I think too. I, I think it was Saint Francis de Sales that says. I mean, that's part of our problem is that we're so busy. That was his solution. When you're busy, everyone needs a half hour of prayer. Except for when you're really busy, you need an hour. And I think that God really. You know, he takes our time and he obviously multiplies it when we start with it and give it to him. But it's also helps us to focus because so much of our time, let's just be honest, is wasted. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like we have downtime. It's like we watch TV or we do. We stay busy doing other things, but God has a way of narrowing and focusing our attention to get the things done. I mean, that's how he obviously he multiplies the time mm-hmm. in that way. Yeah. But we're lucky our parish. We're actually in Northwest Indiana now, and our parish has a perpetual adoration chapel oh, that's nice. really attached that's to her school. Yeah. It's like an old log cabin. Yeah. It was one of the first okay. churches in Northwest Indiana, and they moved it and made it a perpetual adoration chapel. It's been open for 25 years. We're very spoiled, but I will say it's like it's there, but it takes you know you take it for granted. I, you know you mm-hmm. think about like being on the road and being being locked out, kind of like when COVID locked us out of being able to go to mass, right? I mean, I remember what it was like to receive communion for the first time after such a long time, you know? So I think that having those different opportunities where you drive up and have to sit in the parking lot, I think it makes you yearn for it more to, to have that that chance to really sit truly right in, right in his presence. Sometimes I feel like I'll, I'll go a week and I, and I don't go to the, the chapel and I'm like, what is wrong? He's right there. And that's what I said. When it's I her first school. It's, out, like, like, it's, it's like right literally there. in and her parking I'm like lot just of her running school. running home to make dinner. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, Jesus. I'll get you. I'll get you tomorrow. I'll get you tomorrow. It's like, no, I, I yeah. Like you're inspiring to, to no excuses, right? Like figure it out, carve that time into your day. And, and he really does multiply that time. Such a great testimony there. Well, for, for me, it's like, it's so like we're picking up the kids like from school or events. It's like, but it, every time I do it, it's like we're busy. But when I bring the kids there, yeah, and it's just like the other the other adults that are in. It's not that big. It's like the kids are sitting there praying and like it's just inspiring. And they mm-hmm. see the example of us doing mm-hmm. it. Uh, I go to daily mass every day, so that's I go there. That's my I love mm-hmm. to, the you know the actual. I like both, but I mm-hmm. I'm committed to daily mass. I make it almost every single day. Sometimes mm-hmm. Saturdays I miss it if I got some other. I help lead a couple men's groups and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But, but for the most part, it's revolution. I, I mean, once, you know, one, an hour out a week is just not enough. I know that's the bare minimum, but how has anyone ever done anything good by doing the bare minimum? You know, mm-hmm. it's just, it's just not what it is. And I found for me as a convert that I had a lot of growing to do 
and I felt like I missed out on a lot of stuff. I just like, I need to catch up. So eventually like three years ago or five years ago, I started, I just added Wednesday, like in the middle of the week, because I could feel by Wednesday, all my bad hat, I could feel the tension and the anger and the shortness and the impatience and those things creeping in. I'm like during Lent, I'm like, I'm going to do one day. I'm like, well, if I could do it for one day, I did all of Lent. I'm like, I can do it. Why can't I do it every day? Because I, it's just, I have to get up early. There's a 6 a.m. mass on my way to work at a beautiful Carmelite monastery with a bunch of awesome holy priests and a great community. And All right. You guys are both, uh, you know, well, she went up in me here. Yeah, but she, <laughs> no she, she does her, she, she prays her rosary every single morning. She starts her day. She's got yeah, daily masses through the school. She takes her children, her kids. She's a principal at a Catholic school. So, you know, on yeah. Wednesdays, kids go there and then they have their school masses and stuff like yeah. that. So she's, so the point is, isn't necessarily one specific hour. You want the, to carve the time. Yeah. I think that's Making the time. I think that's the solution to all of the, the problems is that we can't sit still for an hour straight. <sighs> I think that's yeah. a big problem. I know it was for me. And when I started doing daily mass, after about a year, I started doing the whole entire mass with my eyes shut until the time of the peace. And because I had to, I'm so like antsy, I can't sit still. So it was like, it was like teaching myself how to do that. So I did it by like meditating through the mass and, and extremely mm -hmm. focusing and trying to slow my, my breathing down and slow everything down and just in, and enter into the mystery. And it really helped me in all the other aspects, whether that's reading a book because you have to sit still and you have to be quiet and it's a lot of people mm -hmm. can't do that. And I think, yeah. I think that's the solution to a lot of the problems that the, most people, you know, they have such short attention spans. They can't sit still for 15 minutes because we know in that silence, God talks to us in mm -hmm. that silence in an hour. Yeah. If you can't do an hour, do 15 minutes and then build your way up to it. Right. And then eventually you, you, you won't even realize that the, it's, it's like, oh, I know when we, you know, she fills in or I, I'll go to the chapel and it's like, holy cow, it was an hour already. It's like, it'll yeah, fly by. Sometimes. It does fly. Yeah. Yeah. She's an alternate adorer. So it's, you know, if they need, she's on the list. So if they need somebody, it's awesome. They got an awesome system mm -hmm. and they'll say, text you and then you text you and then you say whether or not you accept it. that, that yeah. uh, time so we're super blessed our parish. Yeah. So anyway, back to Fulton Sheen, though. <laughs> so, so yeah, no, so, so, so Fulton Sheen kind of came similar to, into my life the same, same way. You know, yeah, really deal. quick. Um, our, our dishwasher broke, um, or the sink was clogged, something with the kitchen. I had to come to the basement to do dishes one, um, winter and it was a winter break. So I had a lot of time, you know, a lot more time on, on my hands and, uh, I brought down all lugged down all these dishes to wash. And I was like, oh, you know, I need I want a good podcast to listen to. This is going to take a really long time. You know, a lot of things to scrub. And uh, I just put on Sheen. Uh, there was a podcast of all of his um, Life is Worth Living series. Like, I don't know if it was the recordings that he made. Yeah, like yeah. it was, wasn't the, the TV show. It was the recordings that right. he made called Life is Worth Living. And I couldn't. I was the same as you. I, once I listened to one, oh, my gosh. I wanted another one and I wanted another one. I, it was very, um, I didn't want to stop listening to him because he's timeless. You know, his ideas, his, what he talks about are so relevant to 2023. Mm -hmm. And I looked it up. I'm like, when did he, when did he, oh, I read, um, peace of mind. I was reading like the beginning or peace of soul, peace of, peace peace of, of soul. soul, peace of soul. I was reading that. And I was like, when did he write this? This is so relevant to people <laughs> today. And I looked, it was like 1940. Um, seven or fifty one or something. It was not even close to to this this era, and he is just so timeless. I even remember texting my best friend, like, because she's she's a practicing Catholic as well, um, cradle Catholic. I'm like, you have to listen to this. Like, that was my first exposure. Did you did you feel like you did you binge binge yeah. Sheen? <laughs> yeah. Well, before Sheen, like, it's crazy how like cassette tapes or these things, like these podcasts, you don't know who how you're affecting or one little thing. My RCI teacher gave me first, he gave me father Karapi. It was my first introduction mm -hmm. to, so I, I listened to like, oh, I don't know, 10 Which was CDs. Good for Bob because he 10, was like a bad boy. You know, yeah. His Bob, conversion you know. story was like mine. I yeah. was like the bad boy conversion. That was me. I was, I was that guy. So I related to his, the first one, which was the conversion story. He was this and then that, you know, but then, so then I was third that, that it was the initial thirst. So then I found Fulton Sheen. Then I just started gobbling up. I read, I don't know, 10 of his books, mm -hmm. but I started with life of Christ mm. and it just opened up the gospels like in a totally different way. I'm like, 
this guy is so smart. But can make it, can make relevant, it relevant and, and it doesn't time. talk over your head. You know, you mm-hmm. like you read G.K. Chesterton, you have to read it five more times and then you laugh. Like, yeah. I mean, that's me anyway. Or Fulton Sheen, I'm laughing with him. You know what I mean? Like, I get him. Like, I get what he's yeah. saying. He makes it. That's genius in and of itself to to take really difficult concepts and make them applicable to people and make it also timeless. So and his analogies are second to none. He does a great job of painting pictures or telling a story. Mm-hmm. And just every time I share a quote, everybody everybody comments on what they say always is this man is so prophetic. Like yeah. he's seeing into, you know, obviously prophetic is also obviously the future, but he this same problems have been going on for a long time, but he just was yeah. very forceful in the truth. He wasn't going to compromise but the truth. But speaking it in love yeah. at the same time, you know, um, so, Dr. Howard, there might be listeners of ours that don't really know much about Bishop Sheen. Could mm-hmm. you give like a little bit of his background and then why you are on this mission for his canon- canonization? Um, I do want to dive into what you think of like the more controversial of why you think it's held up. But not sure. Um, let's get like a little background on Sheen. There could be people going, who is this? What are they talking about? You know, so. Sure. Um, if you want to just give us, you probably know more than than we do about about his background <laughs> and him. So I'll that give sounds it like to you know quite a bit already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, he uh, Fulton Sheen was born uh, 1895. Just to put him in historical context, context, born 1895. He died in 1979. So that makes him what um, 84, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, you think about that. His lifespan, the most kind of tumultuous time of the 20th century, at least in America. Mm-hmm. And uh, you could just imagine that he was a contemporary of so many of the saints that we know, but he was here in the States. But he, uh, his, his, funny, he's interesting. His, his uh, original name was Peter, not Fulton. Oh. So I always kind of smile about that. That was his I baptismal name. He oh. took Fulton, that was uh, his grandfather's name. And uh, they kept referring to him when he was really, really young as, oh, this is Fulton's boy. This is Fulton's boy. So um, let's see. He, he he grew up in a little town called El Paso, which is just north of Peoria, middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah that's kind of where I went to college. I went to college in central Illinois. So. Yeah. Okay. So a little, I mean, literally in the middle of nowhere, uh, did farming, the farming uh, area, and he hated it. Uh, <laughs> but he did say in his own autobiography, he said, what he learned in his earliest years and all of that hard work, he called it the, you know, the ethic of hard work, was what God taught him that he would translate into every single thing he did the rest of his life. So he's like, he's mm-hmm. so glad that he had that experience, even though he, he said he would never have a, a chicken as a meal again because he dealt with so many chickens. Oh. I think killing them yeah, or whatever yes. he was doing. So, yes, um, yes, I, I remember that talk. I heard that one. Yeah, so he, you know, he, was a, he was very bright. They moved to Peoria and then... He excelled in his studies. There was this one prophetic moment when he was young. Uh, he was serving mass with the bishop, Bishop Spalding, and uh, he, uh, for those who can just put you know an image to this, he's in the cathedral and it's a marble floor, and he dropped a glass cruet on it, and mm. he said, you know, there's no decibels loud enough that would uh, match the kind of sound that comes from that. But the bishop just went on with mass as if nothing had happened. <laughs> After mass, you, know, you, you can imagine Fulton Sheen is just like totally, you know, petrified. But the bishop <laughs> comes up to him and he simply just says, "Have you ever heard of the University of Louvain?" And I, before that, he says, "Where, where, where are you going to high school?" Because it's kind of almost like a little test. And Fulton Sheen said, oh, "I'm going to be going to Bishop Spalding, named after the bishop." Oh. And, then said, and then he goes, "But have you had? Have you heard of the University of Louvain?" And Fulton's like, "No." And he's like, "Well." One day you're going to go there and you're going to be just like me. Wow. And he never remembered that until many, many years later. Uh, he went to, um, he, after his uh, ordination of the priesthood, his, some postgraduate studies, he, what, he went to Louvain because he wanted a, um, an institute and a university, some kind of uh, studies that would focus on St. Thomas Aquinas and everything that the world was thinking because he wanted to know the mind of the world so he could respond to its errors. And when he stepped foot, it all just hit him really hard. Like, oh my gosh, the prophecy has come true. Yeah. And uh, and he has, he was an extraordinary young man. 
you know, he, he had a, I think this is an important story because it, it speaks to all of us. Because he says the course of one's life is not determined by the trivial incidents, but by two or three choices that we make. And for him, it was, he just finished his, basically his basic college years. And he applied for this uh, scholarship that if he got it, it would be a full ride, It'd be a lot of money that would pay everything through his doctorate. And um, it was a national competition and he won. And so he ran down and uh, he, to his priest friend, Father Bergen, and he, who was playing tennis at the time. And he said, Father, Father, I won. I got the scholarship. <laughs> and so Father kind of motions for him to come on over, leaves the tennis court. And, uh, and then he looks at Fulton right in the eyes and he says, do you believe in God? <laughs> and Fulton Sheen said, yes. He said, no, no, no. <laughs> he says, practically, do you really <laughs> believe in God? And then she said, he's like, the way he asked that, I wasn't so sure. Mm -hmm. um, but he says, tear it up. And he's like, what? Mm. This, is my, this is my dream. He says, no, you are called to the seminary. He said, Father, look, I can, I can do all these studies and go get my doctorate, all these things I want to do. And I'll go back to the seminary. I can't miss this opportunity. And he says, no, you are called to be a priest and God wants you to go now. Tear it up. Wow. And he did. And, um, and, and Father Bergen said, if you do and you trust him, God will do more for you than, you, than this scholarship. You, he will do you know, 10 times more in your life in, in, in rewarding you for an act of faith like this. And he did, as we know, because uh, after he, be, you know, he, he went to Louvain after his studies, he excelled. He got the highest possible uh, award and honor. He got a doctorate degree, but then he got a super doctorate degree. Um, and he was just so brilliant. Um, and yeah. he got the highest honors. Anyway, so that all kind of set the stage. But like I said, he, his passion was, how do I reach souls? How do I reach the world that is so far from God? And how do I, how do I expose all the errors in the way it's thinking in a way that will be attractive to them? So he studied everything, came back to America. He was, you know, his bishop tested him because after he got that super doctorate, he got invited everywhere to teach. <laughs> he got a telegram with two words on it, come home. And he did. <laughs> and he put, he was put for one year in the, one of the poorest parishes in the diocese, St. Patrick. And it was a black community. I mean, you just think like so different than he would have imagined. Mm -hmm. And he said it was one, one of the best years that he had, and he thrived mm -hmm. in it. And then after that year, the bishop called him in and says, I just wanted to make sure that you would be obedient. I've already promised you to Catholic University to teach. Go run along now. <laughs> so he did. He taught for 20 years. During that time, he had um, uh, a radio show called The Catholic Hour, reached millions of Catholics every week. Um, that was on NBC radio broadcasting, just captivated everybody. Mm -hmm. But then in the 1950s, uh, he became um, what's called the, well, he was made uh, um, Auxiliary Bishop of New York under Cardinal Spellman, mm -hmm. who was the most powerful prelate in the world after the Pope. Like he was, mm -hmm. the, he had that much influence. Mm -hmm. And he kind of, he basically groomed Sheen to become something great because he, Spellman could open any door he wanted. He opened the television door and Sheen um, started a television show in the 1950s called Life is Worth Living. Mm -hmm. It was meant to be on a, prime time, uh, yeah, prime, prime time TV, was, yeah, prime Catholic time. Bishop. Yeah, it, it was designed, not designed, but it was expected to fail. Uh, mm. They were, they had a special slot that this TV network, the Dumont network had that they could kind of experiment with, with funds that they had. And they put uh, Sheen on, not thinking mm. it would really do that much. And oh, uh, wow. you know, after the first year, the, the rest is, is history. He, uh, he captivated the country. He won an Emmy Award for Best person <laughs> TV Personality. He beat all the major, uh, you know, uh, celebrities who were all at the same time as he was. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he, he basically just brought the entire country through the Christian philosophy of life, from the, from the discovery of, of God to then which God do we believe? Why mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, and then all the way in, you know, to the to the end and judgment and, and the second coming of Christ. So mm -hmm. it's amazing, and people don't realize sixty percent of his audience was non-Catholic. 
Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Well, and of that 60%, the, the, the biggest um, demographic were Jewish. Huh. So he, he captivated every, 30 million people watched him every week. Can you what did you say? 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 million? 30 million watched him every week. Wow. Can you imagine? Oh this God. is pre-digital age. Imagine if he was on yeah. YouTube and all these things today. I mean, he is right. indirectly. But he you know, is. <laughs> <laughs> and just like, look at, yeah, look how yeah. he's doing after, you know, mm -hmm. being in heaven. But if he were alive today, um, yeah. you know, like these Jordan Petersons and like Joe Rogan, like the, all these millions of people, like what would yeah. that be like? Um, but so anyway, you know, he, he captivated the world. He, he was, mm -hmm. uh, his, one of his biggest messages though, was, um, the dangers of communism, which yeah. is very important to mention and to understand because everything that we're facing right now, mm -hmm. he predicted, and it's all what communism is. And people mm -hmm. in America have, they don't really understand what that really means, right. but it, it Mark, you know, communism is Marxism and Marxism is anti-God, anti-human, anti-marriage, anti-family, anti-gender. All of mm -hmm. these things were the agenda of Marxism and they're very mm -hmm. patient. And their goal was to to sub to subvert the ideologies of the West over mm -hmm. decades, and here we are. And she right. said, if America does not turn wholeheartedly back to God and reject it, and 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 be faithful to its its Christian moral principles, communism will come and basically liquidate a bourgeois society, mm -hmm. yeah. which is yeah. where we're at. Yeah, no, every time I, I share anything, uh, you know, anti-communist, you know, it's always like, oh, that's propaganda and this and that, because it it's like, you know, there's there's some there's a lot of people who still think that that's a good idea, this this fake utopian society. I know just today on the Catechism of the Year, Father Mike Schmitz, we're on that part where they're talking about the the both and the Catholicism, that it's, yeah, you know, subsidiarity and solidarity, but never does it ever subvert freedom or the individual mm -hmm. that the, the collective never over overrides the individual and that freedom that comes with it. And that's obviously, you know, it's, but it seems enticing, especially for our young people, especially for those in college, because that seems to be where that's the, uh, where they infiltrate into, into the, into the, to, making it glamorous. Yeah. And, sexy, and, right? and like you have these, these impressionable yeah. people that, that they can definitely use that because mm -hmm. it, it sounds appealing, but when you get into what they actually teach, Cause they're never leading with those things like, Hey, you know, they don't even teach, you know, the gulags anymore. They don't tell you about Mao's China. They don't tell mm -hmm. you about Pol Pot. They don't teach you those things, but the Fulton Sheen didn't pull any punches. He was, he was talking about that on like on his TV show. Yeah. And, and it, it was necessary. again, relevant. Like when you do hear it, you know, what he talks about with that, it really is. You can see today how it is. Mm -hmm. It is working. Exactly. It is. He, he, you didn't skip a beat. You, you nailed it. Like it's the woke culture is exactly mm -hmm. what it is. Modern day cult cultural Marxism, which is mm -hmm. the 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 ideology of communism, yeah. is modern day wokeism, and yeah. its agenda is to completely eliminate the image of God from mm -hmm. every aspect of man. Because communism yeah. believes that man is an animal. Man has no soul. It is strictly material, yeah. and that's why. It would eventually, uh, you know, go after all these. It sounds like a good inequality in the beginning. Oh, the rich, the poor. We should maybe find a way to any kind of have out. versus have not. Right? You're gonna find yeah. it in the community. Any and contradiction. It and Marx it. wanted mm -hmm. to basically neutralize, or you know, what mm -hmm. he would call a synthesis. It was a very yeah. Hegelian. You know, you have a thesis, and what he called an antithesis, and then a middle ground. Mm -hmm. Which, but you could apply that to certain things. But he says when you start applying that to morality. Then mm -hmm. everything becomes relative. When you apply it to yes. sexuality, then you have not just the inequality, the apparent inequality, you could say, of man and woman because of work, but mm -hmm. it becomes then the difference of eventually there's a sexual difference that needs to be eliminated. eliminated. Yeah. And so there needs to be then just a common humanity. But what is yeah. this common humanity without God? You're just an animal and yeah. you are what we have today. And, and this is a huge problem because it's infiltrated the church it's in, i mean this is what we're facing right now all these controversies that's going on within the church this is uh it's it's one form or another of infiltration and fulton sheen saw it coming 
Yeah. And, you know, and just to kind of segue that into your other question about what this whole movement of Fulton Sheen is beatification. Yeah, that was what I was going to say. Do you think that's why these delays are purposefully being, mm -hmm. you know, placed in there? I do, I do, 100%. He was on track for the canonization and then it got paused, correct? Because of allegations that are unfounded. Is that accurate? Well, well not exactly. It's just in the so diocese, not, it was, not with him. The... Here, here's the latest because it kind of synthesizes everything. All right. Four years ago, he was. They set the date for his beatification, and of course, once you're named in the in the canonization process, you're a servant of God. Then they look at your life, and if they if every aspect of your life checks out that you that this individual lived heroic virtue, then you mm -hmm. are given the title of venerable. That's actually the hardest part of the whole thing, really, because that's where all the investigative stuff goes goes on, and no stone is left unturned. Mm -hmm. Once you're venerable, I say it's only, <laughs> but you simply need one miracle attributed to mm -hmm. you that is confirmed yeah. by a theological commission, a medical commission. And once they come to the same conclusion and say, yes, this is a miracle that was, uh, you could say, performed, whatever, you know, by Fult this, in this case, Fulton Sheen. Then it goes to the Pope, to the Pope and Pope Francis, then signs a decree confirming that, yes, Fulton Sheen has performed a miracle on behalf of the faithful or has mm -hmm. obtained a miracle and is now worthy to be declared blessed. You set a date and then there's simply a ceremonial mass that right after the penitential rite, usually, is when then there's a, a brief well, synopsis of the life and then they basically, in a very small formula, announce that he's a blessed. He's already blessed once the miracle's confirmed. It's just a matter of a now it's a public ceremony. Yeah. But that's okay. where they sabotaged it four years ago, two and a half weeks, because, uh, right before the, the, the mass. And it was largely, you know, Cardinal Dolan, Cardinal Supich, and Bishop Matano out of uh, Rochester. Mm. And it was, the excuse was, well, there's an ongoing investigation of all the dioceses in New York by the Attorney General of New York. And we just don't know if there's any allegations that are going to come up. Everybody <laughs> bought that line, including, you could say, even Rome, um, because they allowed, and I don't, I don't even, it's this interesting, I don't even know who exactly did what, because it just came back to Peoria that they're going to in, indefinitely pause or postpone the mass. And they were saying, well, we want to wait till this report comes out. Well, nobody was really asking them, well, does this report even matter? Has Rome mm -hmm. looked into every angle that this report poss you know, could possibly do? And they all said, yes, if Rome's done it. Like, there's nothing. And they said, oh, well, there's mm -hmm. these two priests now. Because the biggest thing was Sheen was the Bishop of Rochester for three years, and mm -hmm. which is a really short time. And there were two priests under him that had issues. Um, and the question was, is how did Sheen handle these two priests? Mm -hmm. uh, during mm -hmm. this time, and they looked at it. The Diocese of Peoria investigated it uh, canonically, civilly, all these things, totally clean. So, wasn't there something recently that they like a month ago that they t came out again and said there was nothing there? That another investigation was that was like done? ten days ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, uh, th and it's interesting because the, the movement that we've started precipitated that. Good. I mean, oh, Peoria good. doesn't really. I mean, they keep to themselves. First, I mean, I'll say this, not as like. You know, uh, it's just to, to patronize or anything like that, but it's they are owed a debt of gratitude because they did all of the work, everything to literally to the point of they, you know, they're ready to have the mass where they can finally celebrate everything that they've done. Um, even, you know, even though the church is already determined because there, there's theological questions that are involved in this, but they did all of that heavy lifting. I wish they had fought it more. But there's a yeah. lot of power that's going on behind this. And it has not, mm -hmm. I'm very convinced because you don't pull the plug two and a half weeks before something unless you have something on somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. And right. this, this investigation was already going on before they set the date the first time. So it's sort of like you're like a, like a cop, you know, where's the, who would have the motive to do this? Yeah, and all these kind of things. Well, the New, York would have, New York would have one. They lost the body of Sheen. They've lost over a million dollars in court fees fighting for the body. 
I mean, wow. The, the, they you know, spent over a million to fight oh, over yeah. his. Yeah, it went through every court level in New York, the local appellate and Supreme Court against Fulton Sheen's niece, Joan Cunningham, and she won all of them. And the moment she won the final one, when the Supreme Court upheld her right to have access to the body, and she wanted to send him to Peoria, they had to immediately remove the body from the crypt and ship him out unceremoniously. It was like the middle of the night, you know? Um, only Church Militant, I think, was the ones who went out there to actually cover this like almost clandestine move, the move she <laughs> And then Peoria is like all welcoming him, of course, you know, like, yeah. into the cathedral. So, but anyway, there's, there's a lot of things because I think um, you mentioned, uh, Katie, that Sheen, what Sheen stands for is something that is a, a blessing for those who desire the fullness of the Catholic life. Mm -hmm. And he also is a, he's a figure of, you could say, kind of a judgment of, of one's conscience um, yeah. for those who are forsaking that, who are denying or betraying Christ. And, uh, and, and there's definitely those who do not like Sheen at all. And mm -hmm. so this is the other thing. So you have you have the issue of well they'll say we want to we out of prudence we want to wait and if it takes this uh, this report just verifying what we know and nothing's going to change what we know or what we've even determined let's wait for it and people some a lot of people just say oh well what harm is that mm -hmm. it's saying. But but it's just almost just like any investigation. It just yeah. automatically people that assume the worst yeah. when you do things like have, that. So yeah. As part as without. part of the mm -hmm. the creating, you know, murking it up and, and to mm -hmm. almost to just put that seed to doubt out there because the people never read the story. They just, you know, see headlines. Just see a headline. They don't go Right. So it, it introduces characters. a shadow and then they'll talk about shadows. I'm like, well, wait, who introduced that? Not even yeah. New York, not even the secular state has introduced shadows. The, the, the bishops themselves, a few, a few, introduced this, and Peoria is, is going along with it, saying, hmm. oh, what harm in there is waiting? That's like, mm -hmm. uh, especially from a, a theologian and a, you know, a Catholic perspective here. It's like, uh, do you not understand the role of our saints? Yeah. We don't wait yeah. for the world to be right <laughs> to tell us now is a good time to do it because now everybody's going to be happy about it. First, Who's mm -hmm. everybody? Yeah. The faithful, yeah. no one cares. Not one person, one, one faithful in the world cares about what's going on in New York. Even if they yeah. came out and said he's the Antichrist, we would almost expect that. It's like, <laughs> it wouldn't matter. Yeah. And so yeah. they, it's this whole thing that we need to wait on this. Um, when I, when my wife and I, we spoke to Peoria a few months ago and we asked them directly, well, no matter what comes out, will this change anything? No, it's not going to. We know the truth on Sheen. Mm -hmm. We're doing a great mm -hmm. job now casting, not just casting doubts and shadows, but you're you're holding hostage a man, yeah. not just like, That's oh, exactly look it. at Sheen. Sheen repre not only represents, he, he is the answer to so many of the crises that we have. We yeah. live in the greatest time of confusion. Okay, you were talking about this. I read one thing of him and I find clarity. I find answers, not just on mm -hmm. big things. I'm talking about how to just live life because that's right. where most of the crises are. But he yeah. was a man of faith. He talked about the spiritual things that anchor us, that are uh, the strong points for marriages, what it means to be a true holy priest of God. That was, what, that was the retreat that I listened to. And I was like, oh my mm -hmm. gosh, every priest in the universe needs <laughs> to hear this retreat. And then even lay people need to hear it as well. But the thing is, like he had, like, he 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 embodied every single thing that he taught, and he 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 was a natural leader. So when like when I listened to him, I was like, oh my gosh, I found the spiritual director. I don't have to go travel around the world. Like he's right here. He's like a life coach for me too. He's calling yeah. me on and things. He's like a marriage coach. He is, you know, he's a general. I listen to him. Like I will, like, what he says, I will do it. <laughs> and and we've seen what he did. I mean, this yeah. one man reached hundreds of millions of people around mm -hmm. the world. Right. And so we're to say like we're gonna just wait wait this out. For us, he has no significance. Exactly. Yeah. When yeah. it's like, yeah, well, it does it doesn't it's what's the difference whether he's venerable or whether he's blessed? It's like mm -hmm. how, how do you even how do you respond to somebody who should know all of these things? 
You know, do it's you, like, um, are you, uh, do you know, or the, the, I follow her on Instagram, the woman whose, um, child Bonnie that Engstrom. was the, yeah, Bonnie Engstrom, that that's, that's the miracle that happened with his mm-hmm. intercession. Um, what, like, do you know her or like, is she like, mm-hmm. to me, that's, that's gotta be even harder. You know, yeah. you have, you were the miracle. You were the part of the, this process of this person you prayed for in, his intercession. He heals your child. You're like, yes, this is, you know, yeah. how amazing that is. And then to have it be. Yeah. Know, it's, this, it's an emotional this, this roller situation. coaster. It is an emotional roller coaster. Bob, my wife and I know her, my wife knows her a lot more than I do. Um, mm-hmm. Our paths have crossed over times. We saw her in July this summer when we were out there for um, for a Sheen rally in the Byzantine church. A couple so of you hours. guys are having rallies? Yeah. I, about we, this? We were, at, I, we were the we first. We, that was our first one. That was our first I, one. We wanted and to. It I was know, I, I, amazing. I told you about it. But we, were in, Lake, we were in Lake Geneva on oh, vacation. Oh, okay. okay. And I was like, we were trying to figure out the way to kind of maybe on the way back. And we just ended up staying an extra day. So it just it didn't work. But I, no, I, I saw no, the McCaskies that was our first, the Bears. That, yeah, that was our first. We had Peyton McCaskey show it up for about, you know, 10 minutes and I think or so. That gave him a talk. That, and that Byzantine and priest, he's actually from Indiana, though. I think he's from like Maryville, right? Or something like I, that. I, I, I don't familiar. know. I know. One of the priests that gave the talk. I Father see, Loya I, I, is well known. I mean, like he's, I, I forget. I think you might be right about, yeah, about that. Um, yeah, he's known he's, uh, everywhere from his podcast, Light of the East. He's very yeah. outspoken. He's a great preacher. He's like a Byzantine yeah. sheen, you know. I, we yeah. kind of <laughs> joked about that. We I, wanted, I actually we, know we, a guy that, this, goes to the, that goes to that parish. Yeah, yeah. He is an incredible oh. parish, the Annunciation Catholic, a Byzantine Catholic church. Mm-hmm. When my wife cold called him, <laughs> this is my wife Chantal, because <laughs> um, she's like the operations manager of the Fulton Sheen movement that we started in the springtime to just say, mm-hmm. look, we're going all out on this to want to educate yeah. people. And to build a voice and momentum because Sheen prophesied that this particular moment in the church's history is, like John Paul II said, it is the moment of the laity. And mm. and and Father Loya understood this. And he's it was deeply personal to him, this whole thing. You know, this whole thing, it's a, it is a scandal, uh, how mm-hmm. this is being handled. Right. And 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 um anyway, so we had the first rally there. If I can quickly just jump for a second to the other part, because the New York Attorney General report is only one thing. In the Raymond Arroyo interview, I just can't believe many people didn't catch this. Um, I mean, I have a, an interview tomorrow morning on a, a Chicago station um, for oh, cool. morning morning air. I'll be on morning air. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah. I might drop a little bit of a bombshell there, but yeah, because everybody's like, oh, the interview was like, wow, that was so encouraging. It was encouraging in one way. Raymond did an amazing job like putting somebody on the witness stand and getting out of that witness, like the admit all the admissions that you would want the jury to hear to make a yeah. good decision, you know? And and he had Monsignor Jason Gray from Peoria. And he's like, Okay, so where's the status? And he says, Well, look, you know, there's the um the attorney general report, same kind of thing. And he said, look, we know Sheen is, she is, a, Sheen is clean. It was kind of a big thing. <laughs> and and we know, like, he just kept saying over and over from every single angle, we know. We know. There's nothing that's gonna, that the New York reports are going to change. And then Raymond said, well, what about Rome then? Well, what's going on? He says, Rome has no problem whatsoever with, with any of this, with Sheen. In other words, mm-hmm. he said, the problem is across the pond here. So, in other words, they're going against the, the determination of Rome, who's not acting as an obstacle at all. And a lot of people might have thought, wow. oh, Rome has to do this. It's like, no, it is now not just a few bishops. Now the Diocese of Peoria has kind of become complicit in this mm-hmm. of perpetuating the emperor has no clothes. Like, look at all these things. Mm-hmm. Look at all these things. When it's irrelevant, who ca- like, nobody cares. It's completely yeah, it, it mm-hmm. had, there's no teeth, there's no purpose in it. Yeah. You know, it's sort of, it's, anyway. Um, and so, so this was a big thing. But then at the end, Monsignor Grace said, well, the other thing is we want to make sure that we have the unanimous support of the bishops moving forward. When I heard that, I was like, it's, that's it. There's this, Jesus will come again before that happens. <laughs> Yeah, you know, can't sure. get unanimous anything of anybody anymore. I know. I was like, did you not realize that there were a few 
And you, you can't, you haven't read through the fact that what they did, you know, three and a half, four <laughs> years ago was to sabotage what happened, mm -hmm. not right. out of, because he kept using this phrase over and over, like, Sheen is clean. This, that report doesn't matter. We've already answered all the objections. Rome has no issue about it. And then you hear, but out of an abundance of caution, like over <sighs> and over, but out of an abundance of caution, I'm like, okay, this is scripted. Like, that's yeah. A, and I've worked for the church for so long and I've even scripted stuff for things. And I'm like, yeah, these are all, these <laughs> I are- I recognize these are, that. Yeah. yeah. But out of an abundance of caution. Yeah. Let's just, let's translate that. A man who could have, who, who could single-handedly be an inspiration to lead the church, the Catholic church, especially the United States, back on the right track, inspire the, the younger generation or all generations of priests to inspire the laity, to inspire even non-Catholics to rediscover the importance of a Christian philosophy of life. A man mm -hmm. who understands every single problem that we're facing, knows how to yeah. dismantle it and re literally re-educate the whole Western civilization. <laughs> but having an abundance of cautions, we don't really have, act we don't want to draw attention to him just yet. We want to make sure our internal club is all on board with this. I think at yeah. that point, they've introduced something that is, I believe, is, is definitely not of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there, there's no way uh, that, that, that this is going to happen anytime soon. Now, of course, like everybody's like, oh, it's God's time. And it's God. Like, of course, it's God's time. But you know yeah. what? Like Sheen said this too. He looked to the future. I, when I, I just drove across the country, as I mentioned, and my, my starting point was Philadelphia, right around there. And, and, I, and I went to this little place called Doylestown. And it's the National Shrine of Our Lady Chestahova. It's very providential. That I was like, I've never been there. And it was like 20 minutes from my sister's house. So what an appropriate launch point. It was at that place in 1972, that same year, that retreat that I heard, where she won an award called the Catholic Man of Action Award. And he, thousands of people were there. It's a beautiful uh, uh, campus. Mm -hmm. And he looked out to them. And he said, he said, who is going to save the church? Mm -hmm. He says, it is not going to be us bishops, priests, or religious, but you, the people. Yeah. 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 He says, you have the eyes, the ears, and the mind to save the church. And it is your responsibility to make sure that your bishops act like bishops, your priests act like priests, mm -hmm. and your religious act like religious. Now, nobody wants that role. But it's as if he really was looking at this very moment because, who's, yeah. I mean, the irony, who's holding Again, timeless. his cause for beatification? <laughs> it's yeah. his fellow bishops. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. You know, and during his own life, he was, he was canceled off of TV as soon as he crossed Cardinal Spellman. People, they don't realize, they don't know the story behind, like, why did he leave TV after eight years? It's because mm. he crossed the most powerful prelate of his time in New York and who he proved was lying in front of the Pope over this squabble over money. And Sheen was right. And as a retribution, Cardinal Spellman literally pulled the plug and canceled Sheen. So he was like the first canceled priest of cancel culture would be Fulton Sheen. <laughs> oh, no way. He would be a That's patient so of cancel priests. So bureaucratic. So he, yeah, so he knew. Yeah. And, and and that's like, so that's why this, this movement grew from this. It was like, you know, I, I, nobody likes to be in this position, but right. we have yeah. to. And, and, and it is calling this out. She isn't your, your man, yeah. Peoria. He's not anyone's in, you know, and anyone He's for the church and our yeah. saints. Like Sheen says, yeah. You know, right is right if nobody's right. Wrong is wrong, right. wrong even if everybody's yeah. wrong. You know this quote. So can the Pope yeah. just come in and say enough is enough? Like, can't the Pope could, just yeah, come he in? Could. Okay. He could, but, the, but when you have the most powerful prelates behind that in the U.S. who are very close to the Pope, Supich especially, um, okay. it's not, it, it's, believe me, that's why it wasn't, almost, it was almost without question that this was able to happen. But, yeah. And it's yeah. and it's and it's also kind of uh, playing on a faithful that would that they think that they could probably easily manipulate to say, well, look, we'll just kind of make it look like, oh, well, we want we want, and this is the Bishop of Rochester, we want this to be done at a time of celebration, not a time of of you know shadow or, or doubt. I'm like, nobody had that until you just mentioned that. Yeah, right. And we're not right. going to fall for that because he will mm -hmm. never be beatified. He'll be at the one yard line. It'll be first and goal. <laughs> At the yeah. two inch, yeah. and all we need literally is like, you know, a, like a QB sneak, 
like, you know, if you like follow football, where literally they just, oh, the yeah. whole line just piles over the quarterback and pushes them in. <laughs> and that's what we need. And that's what the movie is So do you see about. that as, as what you guys are doing? Are you exactly? It's exactly you what that? we're doing. And we're trying so, to get people all around the yeah. world. To sign yeah. So it's, it's, explain, and, explain your yeah. movement, explain your movement and what your, your, your end game obviously is to get him beatified. But like the, mm-hmm. what is, um, what are you, what are you guys seeking to accomplish in, in your, in your movements and in your travels? Well, the first phase obviously, or the first goal is, um, to gain such a collective voice for people around the world, uh, so that the bishops are always reminded that, uh, are not just reminded, but they're no, they're being notified with a growing and a louder voice mm-hmm. of the faithful who we want we want our saved. We want that date mm-hmm. set again. And so part of it is also educating. Wherever I go, I, I help people to know the truth about it. And I get a lot of people get angry and they're like, "What?" It's like everything we're told is just smoke and mirrors and deception. All the, yeah. So there's the truth of that, but another part of it too. As I, um, when I go around and speak, because this is like the, the movement part and the petition is, is a part. I, of course, I want everyone to sign it and I want you to share it with everybody on your social media. Because mm-hmm. if we did that, we need hundreds of thousands of signatures like that. Yeah. The Catholics right. are terrible at that, it seems to be, because like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyway, your podcast, I'm hoping, will be literally just like a, an explosion of people saying yeah. yes. So hopefully by the end, I can get you guys to do a call to action. But the other part yeah. is, is I, 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 I'm reintroducing Sheen everywhere. That whole, the essence of right. his, all of his major prophetic things for our times, for families. I focus a lot on that because our, we're losing our families. What does Sheen have to offer us um, mm-hmm. to help us um, to, to really weather these times? I mean, not just weather, but like to, to navigate the ship, kind of like the Don Bosco vision with the Pope on it. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. Okay, so the two columns that shoot up Mary in the Eucharist and, and, and all these things, the church is under attack mm-hmm. with not just bomb and, you know, cannons and all that stuff, but there's books being flown representing all of the, the poisonous philosophies and ideologies trying to destroy the church. Mm-hmm. And so Sheen represents what the church needs to be doing. So I, everywhere I go, I, I bring people into what that knowledge is and uh, that understanding. And then I also help people to understand too, because all roads lead to Fatima in my world, and I think in the in the in the, in the church's world, um, that Sheen is the man who shows us how to live that, not just um, as a bishop and as a priest, but just you know as a faithful Christian. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's interesting because you know he. One, he, I, like no other person, Fulton Sheen can help us to understand the signs of our times, which Jesus says we must do. And a lot of Catholics don't. They just don't care. They're, they're, I, I thought my personal experience, Catholics are the biggest demographic of people who are asleep in the world. That's it. Mm-hmm. Now, when we're surrounded by people in our worlds, we're like, yeah, yeah. we can find some like minded like, oh, yeah. But be go beyond that. I'll say a few mm-hmm. things and it's like. You know, literally, they just been red pilled off of something. What I would consider <laughs> so low on the on the awakening scale. Yeah. But then they're like, so I, I've done a lot of what I've done to help people to understand through Sheen's eyes the war in which we're living in, and then how Fatima is the 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 answer that was given to the entire world, especially the church, of how we can obtain an everlasting peace, and how Fulton Sheen mm-hmm. is the man. I don't really understood it. But he lived it. And here's how you can live it. Because yeah. this is the coolest thing. Talk about prophetic names or prophetic. You know, all the, his name is prophetic. It means of course, war and peace Peter. or exactly. something like that. Exactly. Fulton, yeah. yeah, Fulton Sheen is Irish, Gaelic. Fulton means war. Sheen means she peace. Means peace. It, yeah. Okay. The two things. Everyone and Peter means rock. He was in a rock. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. how, could, how could we ignore what heaven has been has given us, especially yeah. here, the church in the United States. But we've got people all around the world who have great luck for him. Brazil, I mean, it's one, one big country. Um, uh, I mean, South oh, America wow. surprises me. Yeah, there, it surprises yeah. me the areas that are really on fire with him. But in America, we... Well, uh, we I'd say that fire. some of those have to combat a lot of communist ideas. They lived through it and they recognize yeah. his truth. Mm-hmm. When you hear When you hear that truth that he... I mean, the truth, not his truth, the truth that he speaks, yeah. especially if those those people in those countries either were surrounded by communists or actually had, you know, communist 
ideologies within their own countries, you know, and, and have lived through it and don't want to see it. And I, I, I think the, the tide is changing. And I know that the, the, the canonization is super important, but I think a lot, a lot more people are being exposed, especially the younger priests this newer generation of priests that are mm -hmm. coming through that they all seem the ones I talk to, they know Sheen. Mm -hmm. And it's like, those are the priests coming up. Those are the faithful that, that yeah. they're going to have direct impact on the, the lay faithful, because yes. we know we can go talk to people. We can put on social media, but when the, when the priest tells them a lot of times when you get a strong leader, they can really influence people. But what are they preaching? You know, what are they telling them? Hey, bingo. Or are they telling them, Hey, to, to, to do a holy hour, mm -hmm. Hey, to, to read the gospels every, you know, to, to study your scriptures and, and to do these kinds of things, but especially the holy hour, you don't hear that from the pulpit. You don't hear mm -hmm. that, you know, these so-called controversial topics at the pulpit. You hear, you know, uh, you know, Fulton, she was good at jokes, but you know, it was like, it, it wasn't all that. It was like, yeah, okay. He'd light me up. But so, so much of that is like, I want to be your friend type priest, but Fulton Sheen could be light, but he also felt like the stern uncle that you needed somebody who had so much wisdom to teach you and to, to help you with, you know, from everything from, like you said, family and marriage to personal responsibility to just those practical topics stuff. topics are appealing and attractive and awaken you. Like you mentioned, like sleepy Catholics, right? That's because things have been watered down. That's boring, you know, like to, to, to like just listen to be nice, be a good person. Like the watered down Catholicism doesn't work, right? Like we see the fruits from it. Well, I'm sorry, we don't see the fruits from that, right? Like you're going to see fruit from hearing the truth and having it stir something within you and reacting to that. And I think that that generation, if you're becoming a priest today, you are awakened within some kind of truth. There isn't the watered down. Isn't going to work on you. You know, you, you there's well, that's in just this the, culture and this time, a, it's just the thing with standards. When we raise our standards up, which are should be high in the first place, but that's what was their theory was like, let's lower the standards. The entry is, is too high. Let's keep the standards down. Then no one ever goes high. Mm -hmm. But if you raise the standards, a lot of people will rise to standards. And there's still always going to be lukewarm people from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. But if you don't raise the standards, no one will ever get there. If you don't have a high standard of a holy hour a day, yeah, maybe not everyone's capable of doing that. But can they even try? Can they do it a couple days a week? Can they do something mm -hmm. like, but right. if we set no standards, it's not going to happen. And mm -hmm. our parish is it's it's on fire it's busting at the seams they're 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 they've been working on this for 12 years of making serious catholics but like i told you the secret was they have perpetual adoration this isn't just uh you know just you know using uh business leaders and things like that it's like no it starts with prayer and there's always someone praying but mm -hmm. then it's being you know super intentional, intentional and right. for the school like literally we got we attracted this parish because we were looking for someplace serious and they they're like, well, we have a covenant that you have to sign. I'm like, a covenant? I'm like, here's my blood. You know, like, that's what I'm looking for. And it's like, no, it's like serious. I'm like, good. Because they make, you bring your kid to school, you have to go to mass. And it's that, it's, it's, it, you have to go to church. It, it's not an option. Mm -hmm. You get, there, there's a penalties for that. You're going to, you're going to, you know, not because we want your money, because we want you to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. And it's not for everybody. And the, and the priest says that. It's like, hey, this, this isn't for everybody. But mm -hmm. What he's doing by is. raising that it's standard it's, it is for everybody, yeah. but that's on you that's about how, how much effort you're going to put in. We're going to give you the resources. We're going to have the best experience on Sunday. We're going to be here. We have tons of opportunities. It's a reverent mass. We're going to we're going to spend the time on great homilies that are going to be relevant. But mm -hmm. you also have to contribute back. You're not just going to be a spectator. And believe it or not, people thought like, well, people aren't going to show up to that. Well, no, it's bursting at the seams. We're going to have to add right. another mass because there's standing room only and it's a ginormous church. When all the surrounding churches, they can't really get anybody there. And that's because it starts from that theory of set the mm -hmm. standards higher because, right. and you hold to them and people are looking for that challenge in this day and age. It's like, no one's challenged. It's like when someone does do that and inspires you at the same time to want to, to live that kind of heroic, virtuous life. It's like, you know, sign me up. It's like people aren't seeing that anywhere, especially in the culture, especially, you know, there's so many broken families and mm -hmm. there's no, you know, there's no role yeah. models and stuff like that. It's but one like, of the greatest crises too, um, Bobby, is we have a lack of vision for what we want. Mm -hmm. And and that's why one of the things that makes Sheen so attractive is he creates that vision for everyone. 
this entire like everything that we're experiencing right now the, the a new era is coming and mm -hmm. sheen announced even when he was back in like the 1930s and 40s is we're at the end of an era and what's going to be coming is not going to be anything like what we've experienced in the past we're not going to be saving anything of what is that that brought us to this point mm -hmm. the catholic option has has not been tried hardly, definitely not in the United States, and hardly even in in Western civilization. Many many centuries ago, you could say when the you know when other uh, when other eras were coming to an end, the Catholic Church was a light in the Dark Ages. Well, like Chesterton said, and like Sheen says, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, Ch we're, Chesterton. We're, I know they were they were really interconnected, and Chesterton yeah. preached on this a lot. <laughs> yeah, they we're in the new Dark Ages, and yeah. um, and and the Church is the only light. But here it is now. The Church, though, in the light is now in is confusion. Yeah, and and so she. That's why Sheen is so important because he 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 clearly articulates the vision that needs to be at the forefront of all Catholics because it's not like sheen's vision nobody had a i think a, a the kind of comprehensive view that he had in, in a way that he that he alone could articulate that others shared they all shared like all these great minds they all shared the same things but nobody could communicate it as clearly yeah, as i say as he's a master could. communicator he, he, and, and he was yeah and that's why um the beatification is important because I, mm -hmm. I kind of wrestled like well you know if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen but it's like it's the difference. I like, think of it this way. You could have you could you could be doing thing that's really popular and you're changing people through your podcast. OK, and you could have lots of followers. So you have hundreds, a hundred thousand people. All of a sudden, though, the most authoritative thing, you know, influence of the world that would instantaneously in one moment put you all over the map would be the announcement that your podcast, what you do in that is of such an exceptional level that it is now a beacon of attention and influence mm -hmm. that billions of people, well, without you having to do anything, yet you're out yeah. there, yeah, you're in all these all these followers in all these countries, hundreds of thousands. It would be like the, the dream of dreams because all mm -hmm. of a sudden now, you know, not to like, well, this is a negative version, but it's <laughs> like the eye of Sauron is like, in a, if you were to flip that toward like, you know, the, 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 the lights would now be mm -hmm. boom on Sheen. Everyone, mm -hmm. who is this man? Oh, yeah. if he's blessed, yeah. that means his teaching really like, well, the church has gone through his stuff. Like he, he he's, he's not going to have any errors in it. And this just takes little waves and then creates yeah. a tsunami. And that's why. So it's, it's what, it's what this will do for so many. Like Sheen, Sheen's like, like you said, Bobby, it's, he's all about souls. He says, unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. And that's mm -hmm. the real movement of, I think, behind the, the, this Fulton Sheen movement with the petition and all that is because we know the impact that that's going to have on the world, but it's, you know, especially in the West. So what's the, uh, so what's the, the side of the, the Fulton Sheen Institute? So people can learn more about that is that, this vision or helping people with marriage and family. I didn't get a chance to check into that, but I follow mm -hmm. you. I know we'll, we'll, we'll link to all this, all this, the petition yeah, we'll and all this stuff and all, and all, so yeah. the, we'll share it all on, on our socials and stuff. stuff. Yeah. But what exactly, I know you got your doctorate and you went to Franciscan. She was working on her, uh, she, she got a master's from Franciscan, uh, you mm -hmm. online. Um, but yeah, well, tell us a little bit about that part of it and how that's sure. all kind of combined and came together. Sure. Well, the yeah, the institute preceded the movement. It was something that um, I've always wanted to, have, to see materialize over the years. And then in two thousand, right around the time of the beatification, is that fall, that same exact time, even before they announced it, I felt this is the time to start putting together something, materializing where I could have an instrument to, to get start, you know, getting Sheen out courses or whatever it may be. And um, and I did a lot of uh, retreats at that time to really introduce people to that, uh, just to kind of give people a following. Because I, I love live events, and that's always a big part of what we do. Um, and then COVID hit, and so mm -hmm. I I watched, and then and then they canceled, um, where they they canceled the beatification, and then COVID hit. So it was definitely a one-two punch, mm -hmm. and I just watched wow. all of the momentum that I had because there's so many people all around the country. Oh yeah, we want to now like, once again because of the beatification mass, everyone was like, "Come out, we want you to do this." We want it was like lighting fires everywhere, and then wow. when it got paused, 
And then of course, so you were seeing it firsthand of the the pop. I watched the, the, the whole year of work yeah. go. Yeah. It's like in forty eight hours, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do for work? Um, yeah. And so with COVID too, it was always like you have to you know, pray and and then Lord, what do you want me to do? So it was well, Peter, nothing's stopping you from forming this. You know, it yeah. doesn't have to be this monstrous thing. Just start it. And just yeah. like a friend of mine, who started the Avila Institute, uh, Dan Burke. Yeah. I remember this conversation. She's like, I want to do this institute with spirituality. And my other friends be like, well, then just start it. Just start doing something right yeah, now. And that's it. what I did. I created it. And um, and then I, my thing in COVID was I, I wanted to create a course that did exactly what we've been talking about. For me, it was like, you know, 20 years of just work and reflection of where are we going? Where we've been? Where are we going? How do we get here? What is this war to understand? And mm-hmm. then how to the piece? I mean, the, the, those two dimensions. And it was it ended up being like a master's level kind of thing at the end. It was called War and, or it's called The Final Hour. It's called The Final Hour, Fulton Sheen's Plan to Save America and the World. And I took them through like, Four, um, four modules, or what do you want to call them, and and had like all these sub ones. And the first half was all: how do you understand what is the war that we're in? Because most people don't. And if you do, and you get once you're red pilled, then you'll start taking life seriously and what the church has had, has to say. So it's really in depth. It's it's mm-hmm. sheen, but it's the continuity of the church over the last couple hundred years. And when people, by the time they get to the end, where it really focuses on Fatima. And, and deep diving that as the answer mm-hmm. to this and how Sheen saw this. What is the blueprint to actually, like, where, where is the church going to go when this is all done? It's mm-hmm. all in this one course, it's like 30 something hours. Um, and so that took me a, a long time to put together. And mm-hmm. then um, since then, it's been, I've just had different events that have kind of complemented that. I focus, try to, as we could travel more. I wanted to get out and start doing more retreats. I like the digital world, um, but I, I really find that the live events have the greatest impact on people. Mm-hmm. That's uh, true. And, and, and I really sure. wanted to focus on leaders. Uh, that's a big thing today. Where are the leaders? And Sheen mm-hmm. was the, he, he's always been that magnet. So the Institute has been in that mode for a little while. And then of course, then the movement came out this, this spring because I was like, we, we need a wave of the laity. We need to start bringing the Sheen world together and for not just a cause, for his cause, um, because it's not going to move forward, I believe, without that kind of power. You know, people mm-hmm. who are also praying more holy hours and rosaries behind the petition itself, mm-hmm. it's going to be a lot of things. So moving forward in, in the, um, with the Institute, I mean, just as while I was traveling the last 11 days, uh, my wife and I were reflecting on something that Sheen proposed himself. He always had a dream of an institute. And as we were going through it, like, this is exactly what we're, what we're about. And now mm-hmm. we're going to pray and keep working as much as we can to see that happen. And that's going to be, you know, it's grass. I mean, that's, it's, it's kind of right. a grassroots thing. That's and, awesome. and, you know, a few million dollars would help to jumpstart it. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, well, that's been our thing here is like, you know, how much like for us doing the podcast, it's like so easy. We just have a conversation in the basement, put the kids down. It's like, all right, when you start adding video and media and editing, it's like you need people don't realize how much it takes. I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, so I've been teaching myself a lot of this stuff mm-hmm. and trying to learn. And now I'm getting involved with uh, another gentleman. We're going to be doing another show. It's like these are the kinds of things that I want to talk about with people is like, I mean, I know how much Fulton Sheen's impacted my life. And every time I share a quote, it's like, everybody is moved by it. It's like yeah. everything he said is so like relevant today. It can help people. So anything, you know, I can do, or we can do to, to share your Institute and that stuff. Just, right. just keep putting it on. We'll keep sharing it. And definitely Absolutely. the petition, yes. how, you know, We'll, we'll do everything. We'll sign it. Yeah. Your mom has actually yeah. signed it. Her, her mom yeah. is a third order Carmelite. Yeah. She, she All right, will. I'll sign it. Yes, yeah, there's a 15 second. It. Yeah, there's a 15 second call to action everyone can do right now just by going to FultonShaneMovement.com and there's the petition. You can see right on the page um, some of the more uh, you know bigger influencers that we have who have signed it already. You know, we have Dr. Scott Hahn has signed it. Classmates of mine from Steubenville, I have Jason Everett signed it. 
Dan Burke has signed it. Uh, another great guy. If you don't know him yet, Jason Jones. He's a, he's a deacon, right, Dan? Dan Burke. No, he he's not a deacon. Not that I know of. No, he's the, he, he, started, a... he started the Avogadro Institute. He used to be the um, the uh, the the head of the National Catholic Register in EWT. Oh. Okay, okay, I know. Who mm -hmm. okay. He's a Jewish he's a... convert to the faith. He's got a really powerful story. Oh wow! Um, okay, cool. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people have been behind it. We're having a big a big Sheen event um, next month, October fourteenth, in um, West Covina. Just outside of LA, oh, nice. um, yeah. with uh, Terry there. Barber and a whole oh, bunch cool. of other big sheen people and priests, and um, I don't know if we're going to be able to get Bishop Strickland. But I know, I mean, Terry Barber works with him. I'd love to get him Very you know, to cool. be a part of that. So it's it's really uh, these these like having regional events are huge because they are rally points. Just like when you mm -hmm. heard of uh, in at the Byzantine Church. We were, it was, it went everywhere. It was a national story. It was a yeah. Very national, cool. I mean, yeah, the NCR or register <laughs> and then the Catholic news agency, radio stations, and it creates the buzz. And that's, mm -hmm. that, that's what we want. Yeah. So that, and then eventually God willing, I hope that there's just a frustration like, okay, guys, let's, let's just get this beatification done among the bishops. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. Uh, like just to get it. And I don't care who the hero is. I don't care yeah. if somehow. <laughs> you know, soup pitch, whatever, just like, I'm going to, you know, comes out out of nowhere and says, it's time for Sheen. And people are like, I can't <laughs> believe it. Like, I don't care. I really yeah, don't right. because we, we know what, yeah. he, what that's going to mean. Yeah. So anyway, I, I always joke yeah. the second miracle that's going to make him a saint is going to be that his beatification is done. Yeah, like the unanimous bishops is going to be the second miracle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we got to pray for his intercession for that, right? He's probably oh, laughing right now. Like, yeah, right. Oh my gosh, I can't um, even imagine what he's thinking. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, we've <laughs> kept you a long time already. And yeah. We, this uh, has been very interesting. We we love Fulton Sheen, so we're yeah. definitely we'd yeah. love to see it. I'd love to see I ST love... Fulton Sheen real soon. I know For that, sure. And I don't know how many if I went and looked at all the I mean, I'm almost post every day about Fulton Sheen. So out of like every single post for the last two years, there's always one person that comments and said, make him a saint already. <laughs> like so you know i'll i'll, I'll yeah. make sure I'll, I'll extra put like hey right. sign the petition and start putting it in there like hey do your part because yeah unfortunately absolutely. that's how things work you know it's yeah. like yes there's you know there's a hierarchy and yes you know it's ultimately you know the, the holy spirit and, and stuff like that but like you said public opinion and news stories and these things mm -hmm. you know we pay attention you know based on a lot of times based on things that are you know catch fire and right. go because there's so much stuff it's like you can only focus on so many things, and if it's if it's everywhere, it's like it's hard for people to turn away. So mm -hmm. let's try. To and it's the easiest the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. This is the. Like, it's not like oh, the heart's let's done. let's like let the church come on, go fast, and and, and make him a saint. Like the pro, you know, speed up the process. The, no, process, the process is, is over. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. thing. Right, right. I, I mean, it, they could right now. It could be, you know, they could send out a press release. Oh, we set the date again for yeah. December or right. next month. It doesn't matter. That's the, it's like, oh my gosh, we're so close. So yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously, what you got, what you guys are doing with this podcast and, and everything that you're doing, never underestimate the encouragement to, to do whatever you, we have a passion for. So like have right. people sign it and say yes. And because one person, it only take a few people who have major connections who also then see the importance and then it's wildfire. Right. And that's what we really are hoping for. It's like, literally, it's yeah. a grassroots movement. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it's, I just want to get this done. And then the next part after that is like, yeah, I'm just good. Then I get to really dive in more. With yeah. Him. Right. And we right. can start rebuilding I, this world with him. Right. Yeah. And that's what I love the twofold nature of, of your movement. It's not just about the, the, the sainthood. It's about just exposing people to his ideas to, to, to the, well, his ideas, which are Christ, you know, it's, it's to the truth. Right. But it's again, packaged yeah. in a way that is relatable and understandable and yeah, completely I don't know a better to our time. So it's perfect. It's so, perfect so tech. for someone who hasn't been exposed to Fulton Sheen, what would you recommend for someone to start? Uh, like I said, I, I said life, I like life of Christ, but is there something that's accessible? I know there's different podcasts like where they re, pr, re yeah, promote mine was, them. Mine was is there any series that. or anything yeah. that you would recommend for a beginner, somebody to, to fall in love with Sheen that wouldn't be so maybe over their head, something someone like a lay person can just kind of, who's just maybe who's like, just oh, getting their feet wet. Who's this which, Fulton yeah. Sheen guy? And, and, and yeah. I want to check him out. 
Well, of, of I mean, naturally, the Life is Worth Living series that he did during the yeah. 50s, I mean, that, that was designed to reach everybody, especially non-Catholics. Um, so any everyone uh, can, can access that. Um, I, I recommend uh, people looking up Sheen on uh, spiritual topics. So you could look them up on YouTube and just put in like maybe Sheen Retreat or you know, those because those really are they're very inspiring. And he takes you through the life of Christ. And, um, mm. you know, there's a great series, though, for some who are also just want to jump to like, wow, Sheen right now, like what's what his relevance and things. Um, there's the, um, his series that he did is the last series that actually was never even, um, released to the public, even though it was put together and it was mm -hmm. co called, um, Quo Vadis America or what now America. Mm -hmm. And as an American, that was like, wow. And he, he takes you through all the different dimensions of where we're at, oh, where we need to go. Uh, he's yeah. very optimistic. Um, but you know, those are all videos. If you're going to read something on Sheen. Life of Christ is a good one to start. Um, I, I highly recommend Way of Happiness. Is I was going to say, I bought a friend uh, yeah. The Way of Happiness and she yeah, loved that, it. And it was a shorter read to her. And it's, it's a not short real, read and bite size. Not like lift up your heart. Or, and it, yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's, he, th that's all really a lot of human development, which is um, often neglected by the church. Yeah. And, right. and by Catholics, or they they get like, oh, whoa, whoa, that's like personal development, self help stuff. I'm like, yeah, like, why don't you yeah. get it from a cat? Why don't you get it from somebody who's we a master? We should get it get from it the, the cat. We should get it from, the, get it from, right from our way. faith. That's yeah, exactly. and exactly. So those things are, I think, are invaluable. Um, mm -hmm. I always recommend his his book on Mary, um, the world's first love. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, my doctorate yeah. was on his Marian teaching, and it's you know it's, mm -hmm. it, that one's it's called the woman. And I talk about that and it's very biblical. So like if you love Mary and you want to, or, or if you're just curious about her, he'll present it in such a way that uh, you'll fall in love with her. And if you read everything, if you've read De Montfort and Colby and all these like, people mm -hmm. I love, you read Sheen, you're like, oh my gosh, this guy's a whole nother spectrum of colors that I didn't see in the other one. And now it all comes together. Yeah. So yeah. wait, you know, that's, those are, those are some important ones. Of course, if for marriages, three to get married, is yeah. a great yeah. one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Cool. And I'll say during oh Christmas, the really short, it's very short. I have a little purple book by him. I can't remember the name. I remember reading that for the first time and oh, loving it. It has a little angel. Christmas. Yeah, there's lots of little good pamp like little things up there. Little pamphlets. Are, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for yeah. Lent and, and Advent. He's got yeah. a catechesis, I know too. I've listened to all those on a podcast that someone re released them kind of similar to Father Crappie did the whole catechism. It's kind of very mm -hmm. similar, but you know, don't be overwhelmed if, if this is the first time you're here or you maybe, you know, you, you listen to him once or give him a, give him a chance. There's so much. Yeah. You will never that, be disappointed. I, I, right. I'm I, firmly I've convinced re -read Life anything of Christ like from three Sheen times. will be great. Yeah, anything. I agree. And what I do too is like, okay, I, I'll, I'll read the gospels before mass on Sunday and then I'll go read, like you could pull up in Life of Christ. There's a, mm -hmm. there's a, you know, an index and it'll tell you the readings you can go to and find it. And then he just opens up different layers of things that you didn't even think, think about. about. It's like that are relatable. Yeah. Relevant. That it's just so good. Yeah. That's just why it's so, mm -hmm. he's such, so timeless and it's so insightful because those insights were probably coming during his holy hour where he was literally right. in front of the blessed sacrament and God was like putting it on his heart. You know, to speak his greatest to insights so, came from there. He didn't hide that. He says, "Yeah, there's the greatest insights don't come between two covers of a book, but on two knees on a pray to you before mm -hmm. our Lord." And he prepared every one of his television shows. He wrote all of his works all in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. So, wow. <laughs> there you wow, go. Wow, I didn't know that. That's, that, yeah, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Well, so anything else you want to leave us on the way out, as far as um, other th other than you know your socials? We got the phone. Sheen Institute. Uh, yeah, on Instagram is a, is a great way to follow us. It's Fulton.Sheen.Institute. Or sorry, sorry, movement. <laughs> Which mm -hmm. my wife does all this. I think we'll, we'll I think link to it. Oh, we'll, we'll link to it. it. I got we'll both of them. Yeah. You'll see it because there's I'll lots of amazing of memes that are on there. Um, yeah. it, my, my wife's uh, kind of gotten me into that world, but she manages all of that and does because she, she's really good at it. Um, another thing, too, this is, uh, I don't know how long I'm going to have it. But uh, with this road trip that I just came back, um, yeah, I thought you had the days, miter. Yeah, I have a relic of Sheen that I have in, 
been really blessed to share with other people. And everywhere I stopped, we, you know, it was spontaneous. This is the kind of the fun grassroots part. Families would get together or a parish would welcome me in. Or I, I spoke at Mother Angelica's Monastery from Canton, Ohio. I didn't expect to be there. And okay. it was just speaking in these places and they could venerate the mitre because another big part of this is you uh, drawing close to Sheen as an intercessor. I want to see massive miracles take place mm -hmm. and relics, you know, in our own faith are really important for that, mm -hmm. um, for uh, uh, places and instruments of grace. So um, if somebody's interested in saying, oh my gosh, I'd love to have that kind of like what we're doing in California and mm -hmm. want to bring it to an area, I just say reach out to us. And it's really easy to do that. You can if questions or um, or something like this. If you're like, oh, I want to bring Sheen to my area, simply send a message to team at FultonSheenMovement.com, team at FultonSheenMovement.com. And mm -hmm. it's right there. And you could also do it from the FultonSheenMovement.com Fulton website. Cool. But, uh, you know, I think that's, you know, it's the more people we can bring in, um, and, and then expand, it's, it's just going to be one big family. And we all, and as we grow, we can be a greater resource for, uh, for others so that it's easier, you know, to get access to him. Mm -hmm. And, and then another thing I just totally forgot if uh, the far, as far as prayer goes, we have a, an international, I call it a prayer family, um, Monday through Wednesday, we pray the rosary live on our YouTube channel. Oh, cool. And it's actually the Fulton Sheen Institute channel. So not confusing people, but the full, just, just if you put it in Fulton Sheen Institute, it takes you right to our channel. Mm -hmm. And um, so, of course, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live and for anything. But we, uh, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, 10 Central, 9 Mountain, right? 8 a.m. here Pacific. So, yeah. And, and these people pray every single day. Like I have Ireland, Northern Ireland, Germany. All around uh, the world. I mean, That's Malta. Great. Yeah. We, now we have somebody who just joined us from Uganda today. So, and, and we pray the Fulton Sheen Rosary. I don't know if you, he designed a rosary. And it's a, he called it the World Mission Rosary, and it was to pray for the spreading of the gospel to all mm -hmm. five regions of the world. And so, oh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's beautiful. And I'm just pulling out of my pocket here, but you can kind of see it right here. And it's the five regions are yellow. We, in the first deck, we pray for all the countries of Asia. Red for all the countries of the Americas, the blood of the martyrs. Oh. White for um, Europe. White because where the Pope is resides, blue mm -hmm. Oceania, oh. Australia, New Zealand, that whole region, and then mm -hmm. of course the green mm -hmm. for the beautiful fields of um, of Africa, and then by the end we're praying for all those in those areas, missionaries, and just for the needs. And it's powerful because now that we have people representing, you know, they're representing those regions of the country as you pray. So it's oh it's a, very oh, cool. So, I love that. So, yeah, so I invite everyone to join us because uh, you know this. Our Lady said, "I've had to pray the Rosary every day for peace and an end of the war." Right. Well, this is one way that helps us to do that, and you get the benefit of all the other Rosaries prayed together, which a lot of Catholics don't realize is when you pray with ten people, like your Rosary has the power now of ten behind it. Mm -hmm. Wow! The wow. compounding yeah, prayer yeah. <laughs> power, exponential. So, well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's just, I know, I just know personally, anytime I share anything about Mary, it just, it just literally lights the internet up on, on fire because you get so many people coming out against and for, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah, it's so, it's just like, but I, then I know it's, it's, that's what it is. It's like, it's true. It's like everything about it, the promises, you know, I, I was able to help when the Fatima statue actually came to our parish, I don't know, was it 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. I was one of the people that, to, to to help carry it in the procession. It was like such an honor. I was like, oh, it was so awesome. But no, we'll uh we'll definitely be praying for your uh for this mission because like Absolutely. I said, we we want our our kids, our kids know who Fulton Sheen is. We want <laughs> we want other you know families to know because right. th this message is timeless. It's helping people to grow in love with God, Jesus, Mary, the church, and then how to be great citizens in America. He was very patriotic and how to be better husbands, better wives, better mothers, fathers, all these things together. It's just like, how could one priest like tackle all these subjects, but including he, psychology. He, yeah. So, but he did. And, right. and it's just, right. it's just crazy. So it's just like, you don't got to go Catholic. Yep. Yeah. You don't have Whatever's to go 
do all the research yourself. You get one storehouse of a person. That's who is, it. He's done all the heavy lifting. Person to put it all together. So, yep. So no, I appreciate you taking the time. We had a little hiccup yeah. when we started, but it all worked out <laughs> this whole, this whole time. The dog's been trying to attack us from the back. Yeah. Here. So I don't know. Yeah. That's well, cool. you can make this a two parter. You, you can make your first podcast a two parter and then you could tease it out. I've done that with people I've done interviews with. And yeah. literally we've talked for like four hours because we're like, we're off the record, then on the record. And then we kept talking and I kept recording. And then I was like, wow, like, you know, when was it Daniel O'Connor is a great guy. He's like, oh my gosh, there's three podcasts. Cause I intended only to do <laughs> yeah. like a 45 to 50 minute, but then I had three or four and then people will just kind of go, Oh, that was interesting. And then you tease them to the next one. And yes. <laughs> so you can oh, do yeah. whatever you want, but it's like, yeah, as yeah. you're getting into this, yeah, I mean, cause then you have like the Matt Frad, you know, marathon, like four hour interviews and, yeah, it doesn't well, matter um, who you're talking to. It's, it, it gets long, you know. Oh yeah, right. no, it, it always starts like off to be minutes. short. Like for us, it's always like we don't have a script. We just start talking about yeah. a subject. We pray about it, and then we just have a conversation and invite people in. And that's that's what Rogan does. That's what these people do. Yeah, they're yeah. not. It's not. Those are the most authentic to me. It's like yeah. just a natural conversation. Just a natural conversation. Yeah, and, yeah it's great. And, well, we appreciate your time. Yeah. And uh, would you like to end on a prayer? Would you like to pray? Sure. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, you said you came to set fire on the earth and how you wish it were ablaze. We pray for all families and we entrust them to you, especially marriages. Marriages where uh, there is great struggle. Uh, a lack of hope, you know, the marriages that marriages is at the center of a strong family life, and the devil works so hard to attack that. We we lift them up to you, especially you know, in the Catholic couple podcast. That um, families in these times will find you standing there, knocking at the door, ready to enter in. Please uh, go in with the fullness of your mercy and your power and raise up strong catholic marriages and strong catholic families um, bless the fredericksons and all of their work bless it as they launch this podcast may it reach countless thousands of souls we ask the intercession of venerable fulton sheen to obtain this uh, as as he was blessed and to pray with us for our blessed mother as we pray hail mary full of grace, full of grace the lord is with thee Blessed art thou, thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, sinners. Now. Now, now in the hour, hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Venerable Sheen, pray for us. Pray for pray us. Pray for us. Well, thank you so much for your time. If you could, check out all the, the socials we have linked. Don't forget to uh, like and uh Follow us, and uh, we really appreciate your time, and God bless you and your mission. Great. Thank you. God bless you. That's great. It's a lot of fun. All right. Thanks. Thanks for coming.